Hey, what's happening out there? This is Halftime Prep Talk. We're here in the jungle at Lewis County High School where we're gonna talk to Joe Hampton, Trenton Walker, and Jake Parker here in a little bit. HTPT is brought to you by Fannin Automotive Family. And check out the Chick-fil-A ticker at the bottom of your screen. You can see some upcoming games with updated records of all area teams. I'm here with Zach Clemmy, Matthew Sparks, I'm Aaron Snyder. Three people, guys, won the Powerball on Wednesday night. You are not looking at any <laughs> of the three people right here because we're here. Yes. We, pr we probably wouldn't have showed up. We would have holed up, and, and you might not have seen us ever again. But So luckily for you guys, or unluckily for you guys, we didn't win. Um, <laughs> all right, it's time for balls in their court. Just received a crisp pass from point guard Jake Parker. And I'm going to let Matthew start us off. Oh, thank you very much. Who gets your game ball for the week? Well, I'll tell you, you know, the, uh, the race night at Rams have been thirsty for a big win. And uh, they got it, I think, this Saturday against Russell uh, with the help of Ashton Sips. I uh, had a big game with career high 18 points, including the game winner in triple overtime. Uh, I talked to Coach Keaton after the game, and he was talking about that, uh, you know, she's uh, been the ultimate role player for the Lady Rams, and this year she's taken on a much bigger role, and uh, she's doing the score more and rebound, and she did that uh, Saturday, Saturday afternoon. You know, there are plenty of options once again. I mean, there's so much quality talent in this area, but I've got to go down to Johnson Central and pick Mason Blair. I mean, how can you deny him a game ball after what he did? on Friday night against Belfry. 30 points in one single quarter, and he had two assists. So he wasn't, being, <laughs> he wasn't just, just being selfish the whole time. He wasn't just looking for his shot. But when, he was, when he's hot, his teammates know to find him. And Cole Crace has really come on as a point guard. Yep. I think he found him a lot beyond the arc, inside the arc, and he drew, drew fouls and went to the free throw line. He was perfect all the way around in that first quarter. Five of five from each of those spots. 30 points in the quarter, so Mason Blair. You even said he, he banked in a 3.2 from like 25 he, feet out. He didn't did. It? That's how you know it's your night. Yeah. Um, usually a lot of times, we, and we talked about points primarily with these guys, but sometimes denying points on the other side of the ball is just as important. Uh, Josh Braley scored six points for Ashland against Fairview on Tuesday, um, but he and Brian Kulamon combined to hold Dylan Romine. He's averaging 21.4 points a game. They held him to four. Uh, Bradley primarily was the guy on them, and the key against Romine is keeping him out of the paint because that's – you know, Fairview's penetration rather is kind of where they, they get a lot of their offense. And Ashland did a good job with some, some ball pressure and some full court pressure and some other those sorts of things. And uh, Josh Bradley was, was key in holding Romine down. And um, that kind of Fairview struggled very much to put the ball in the hole um, of shooting from the field at that point. Uh, so we'll go with Josh Bradley. All right. Let's move on to our three point shot. Top three games of the weekend, fellas. Let's go first with, uh, on Saturday night, the All-A kicks off, 16th Region All-A Classic kicks off, and uh, Fairview and Raceland are gonna meet, and that's always a big rivalry, um, and I know Fairview's been struggling a little bit, but I think that still slips in our top three games of the week, and uh, Zach and Matt, uh, what do you guys think about uh, that matchup? Well, it's a Boardville doubleheader, but kind of focusing on the, the boys' side. They played a couple of weeks ago, and Raceland beat them at Fairview. It's again in Westwood. Um, Raceland and Fairview are both kind of still working to find an identity at this point. They're kind of, uh, neither one has had a lot of a, a success scoring the ball. And Fairview's also kind of struggled with Anton Washington's not with the team anymore. And that, that bothered them very badly against Ashland. Right. Uh, they struggled to get the ball up the floor. They struggled to get shots into places where they want to get it. Um, uh, Coach Derek Cooksey has talked from Fairview about uh, getting these guys to play with more intensity. That's something that they liked a little bit. Uh, against Ashland and, and you know if you play for Fairview and you don't have intensity in a game against Raceland then you know you're kind of going to be in trouble so I expect them I would think they'll come out with a little bit more fire than they showed uh, in that game for sure but uh, they're just they're lacking offensively right now and Raceland I, I like it a close one there. Yeah Fairview's coming out with a larger lineup now with Hunter Adams and Alex Roy both starting now and playing significant minutes. Um, how do you think Raceland might match up with that? I think they make them pretty good. Uh, Racing have a lot of height on their team, but they do, they do play great defense. You know, this is a huge rivalry between these two teams, and especially if you can get them bigger in the Class A tournament. I mean, this is a big deal to schools like this, really small schools. Uh, you know, I think both teams are looking to maybe jumpstart the second half of the season with a good performance. But it's kind of hard, you know, when some of the best teams in the region are in this allied class too, with LA County and Morgan and West. Right. 
Uh, I look for Racing to pull out a close game. Both teams are really tr struggling to score the basketball right now. But Racing, I think, will pull that close game. There'll be some good future matchups the rest of the week in the Holy Classic. Like you said, Morgan, Elliott, and West all in there. And the, the uh, semifinals and the finals are going to be held at Morgan County. Our, uh, the second game we're going to talk about here is it has a really intriguing storyline. Ashland at Mason County. Mason County coach Buddy Biggs was just at Ashland, uh, finished up a, a long stint there um, and just after last season. And, uh, you know, he has Mason County playing pretty well. They've struggled a little bit the past week or so, uh, but Ashland's been on a roll with new coach Jeremy Howe. So that's an intriguing matchup on Friday night. Ashland's playing really well right now. I mean, like you said, Mason County, they've had their ups and downs. They've got some quality wins. Uh, most impressively for Ashland, I think they've beaten Clark County twice, which is out of that region as well. And Clark and Mason are usually somewhere in the top two or three in some order. Um, so that kind of, you don't compare scores or any of that sort of thing. And I don't believe Mason and Clark have played yet. But uh, that gives you kind of an, an, an indication of how uh, Ashland might look against a 10th region team. Um, I, I, well, I like the way Ashland's playing right now. Um, they're not as athletic as Mason County, but they're just on a roll. Um, and, and, you know, they're going to have all psyched up to, and fired up to play against Buddy Biggs. And we'll just kind of see, uh, you know, how, how that's able to, to work out because Mason County doesn't have quite the same emotional edge necessarily because uh, they didn't have the connection to Buddy before this year uh, that Ashland has for the last nine. So. Ashland shot 70% from the field on Tuesday night. What a difference a year makes, though. If you look back last year and Ashland's uh, season, lost to Mason County at the same time last year, 78 to 37. Mm -hmm. Uh, to go 0-17. Now they're 9-3, they're playing much better. I think maybe uh, the reason is I think it's not Christian Miller's team anymore. Just digging contributions from everybody, especially on defense and side. I think uh, Mason County has three guys and averaging double figures. So it's really a big defensive test for them up in Maysville. I think Mason County kind of pulls that, pulls that out. Another top game of the weekend is right next door at Lewis County Middle School. Greenup County and Lewis County in the 63rd District Showdown. Guys, it's been a crazy series of late. Uh, Greenup County um, had, had the upper hand last year. Um, what do you think about this year? Uh, this, this and in the first matchup this year. Yeah, too. these are teams that are they're pretty close to neck and neck really in that district. Um, Greenup and Lewis are kind of at the top and Russell and Raceland are in some order a little bit further down. But this, and we talk a lot about the 62nd district specifically and how balanced it is, but this district has a pretty fair amount of balance and parity to it as well. Um, I, I like the way that Lewis is able to match up inside with Greenup better maybe than some other teams do and, and actually has a little bit of an edge there. Um, guard play, it'll, that's what it'll come down to. And we'll talk to a couple of Lewis County's guards here in a minute, but uh, if they're able to get their shots and, and, and play well, I uh, like the, the, the Lewis County Lions chances at home. All right, what about you, Ben? Well, this has really become quite a rivalry. I think it's really been amped up here in the postseason. I hate to re bring up old wounds here, but, you know, <laughs> Green County's got them in the district the last couple of years on like, tip-ins, last-second shots. But uh, Lewis County's much better right now than this year. They're really on a roll right now, five wins in a row. You know, they had to play in this gym the other night because they had no heat in the middle school. Right. But they're, 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 they're playing with a lot of heat right now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we got two guys on Lewis County's team that don't get a lot of, a lot of press you know, in the region with Trent Walker and Jake Parker. So uh, I think Lewis is really tough to beat at home. And I think they're going to take it. Another key is Seth Wallingford. Uh, he's had some nice performances for Lewis of late. And, uh, you know, you look at Greenup County. Greenup County, uh, if Gage Hughes is hot, they're really tough to beat. If he's not, they struggle a little bit. Uh, Christian Wireman, another streaky guy for them. He can be deadly from beyond the arc. Um, so it kind of depends on how uh, Lewis County does against um, against those two guys, I think, Gage Hughes and Christian Wyrman. I think Mike Hubbard has had a good year, too, for the Musketeers. Um, but I think he can he can get some uh, production from him. I mean, Greenup County can probably get some production from Mike Hubbard and still not win the uh, game. Greenup Green is a very streaky team. They can score points in bunches really quickly. I think that's how mostly they win a lot of games. They go on these runs during the game. So uh, defense will be a huge uh, momentum swing there. So all three of us are going with the home team in that matchup. Let's talk to the home coach, Joe Hampton. All right, our halftime prep talk guest today is Coach Joe Hampton. Been around a while here at Lewis County. Uh, started in 99, 2000. Coach, first of all, I have to ask you about the longevity. What's kept you in it so long? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe not very smart. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, I don't know. I, you know, I, my main paycheck comes from teaching, but this, this, uh, additional responsibility 
makes that part of my job to me a lot more enjoyable. Right now, the Lions are on a roll, and that's going to make your job a little more enjoyable too. Five wins in a row going into the Greenup County Showdown. Um, what what's clicking right now with your team? I, I feel like we're getting more support throughout. I think I think it's more of a team effort from when we started the season. We were a little more uh, individualized, I should say. I, I feel like we're just the whole sporting cast is kind of starting to learn the roles and accept those roles, and, and it's translated into a more even scoring across the board. If you look at some of our box scores, when the whole team's successful, you know, I think that's part of what why we're now winning a few instead of on the other end. Well, we're going to bring uh, Trenton Walker and uh, Jake Parker here in a little bit. And those two guys make up a pretty good backcourt. Uh, when you talk about 16th region backcourts, uh, you got to feel pretty comfortable putting them up against just about anybody. Don't you? There's nothing to substitute for experience. You know, these guys have been here since they've been 8th graders. So uh, I feel pretty confident. Now, there's times that they don't see, they don't know that I'm confident when I yell at them a lot for turning the ball over. But uh, in crucial times, we had a little bit of that last night when we played Russell. So, uh, you know, I do have a ton of confidence in them. But, but uh, experience, like I say, they've been here since they've played. So, pretty, pretty proud of them. And, uh, like I say, go to battle with them any day. Jeremy McCann's new role off the bench has been kind of a spark for you guys. You mentioned the Russell game, you had 14 in that one. Uh, he's kind of embraced that role, hasn't he? He really has. And, you know, that's, as a coach, it's hard to know how players will respond. He's been in the starting lineup for most of the games around Christmas. We started mixing the lineup up, uh, kind of hit on the fact of him coming in uh, and splitting some minutes with Jacob Kuber. And Jeremy seems like he's really flourished offensively, especially in that role. So um, you're always glad to see when it, it doesn't affect them that they're now coming off the bench instead of starting. His minutes are probably actually increased, so you know it, it's it's a win-win for him right now and for the team as well. Lately, you guys have been kind of uh, like the giant killers in the 16th region. Uh, you know, you guys beat Fleming County a couple years ago; they were defending champions. Uh, beat Elliott County this year, defending champions, obviously with a lot back. Um, uh, kind of have a little bit of a history of beating defending champions in the 16th region. Maybe a little bit. Uh, we hope that can translate to later in the year. It's it's good. It's, it's good for your confidence more than anything. It's what uh, when you get a good win like that. And as you look at the region this year, you probably feel it's maybe open as it has been. Uh, we were, we've been fortunate enough to get the regional final one time, and we met maybe the best team ever when we got there. So uh, I, I'm not taking away from anybody this year. I don't see that 2009 Elliott County team out there. So I think it does a lot for your team to show that they can play with, you know, different teams and they have a chance like everyone else. As hard as it is to get to the finals, a win like that kind of proves to your team, hey, we got a chance. And that was a very good team you guys had. Uh, you made a nice run in you know, right. line. Uh, I, I remember covering that game. Uh, uh, I think Cody Riley was on right. that team. Right. And, uh, of course, you know, Chris Thompson made a big right. impact for that Absolutely. team. So it was a good team, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, very good. Worked out well. Chips fell correct in the right force that year. Um, where's the, the origin of the Mr. March nickname? Where does that come from? I say Elden May. I'm pretty sure that my first year here, uh, we started 0-7. Um, won a district title at home. Followed up this next year, we started 0-7. It's pretty much a different team, totally different team. Right. Win a district title. And I'm not sure if that happened the second year or what, but I think that's – he was writing for the Daily Independent at that time, and maybe for Maysville as well. But he, uh, pretty sure he gets credit for that. Uh, <laughs> that's that's not mine by any means. <laughs> we'll give that one to Elton. Yeah, right. Right. Um, you guys have had some wild games with Greenup County over the last couple of years. What do you expect this Friday? Another wild one. Uh, you know, they're they're the top seed right now, and we need to try to put ourselves in position to to be there with them. Uh, Lost a tough one last year in the district tournament opening round. Crazy, one of the craziest ones I've seen. You know, you talk about it been around a while. I've seen a lot of basketball games. And that one was uh, very tough as a, being on our end of it, but uh, just goes to show you it's not over until it's over. And, uh, but uh, we have, we had a lot of intense games, and I expect Friday to be no different. 
Uh, Merle Kidwell, it seems like uh, you can't separate from him. He's uh, uh, <laughs> used to coach with him, then coached against him when he was at Russell, and now he's on Greenup County staff. Right, right. So you'll see him again. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we text a lot and try to get figure out what's going on, but neither one of us tells too much. You know, pretty tight lipped on it, but it's, it, it makes for an interesting rivalry. That bell signal, just three more questions, so now I'm down to two more. That's good. Um, what about having a bluegrass musician on your staff, and Scott Tack? Does he ever uh, get the banjo out or the microphone out or anything? He hasn't done that yet. It's open. The floor's open to him if he ever wants to do that. But uh, you know, we talked to him before we went on the air here about if he want to come in and get on the spotlight a little bit. He acts like he shies away from it. He loves it. Loves the spotlight. So it wouldn't shock me if we saw him with the banjo in the locker room at any time. <laughs> Uh, finally, I want to ask about uh, just the team effort between you and your wife. Uh, your wife's been involved for, uh, you said, since your third year. I, I think that's correct. Uh, Becky keeps the book right. uh, for you guys, so uh, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to share that uh, little family affair. Absolutely. And I, I tell any young assistant that gets into this crazy profession that you really need support, and support from home from your spouse is critical, uh, but she's been there throughout. And it, I, don't, I really don't know how a coach can do this if they don't have that support. Getting her on the book is just, uh, it, it helps her as well. It gets her, you know, you are a coach and you've you got a lot of critical comments from fans, even even your own, and it got her out of the stance where she didn't have to hear some negativity sometimes. Even when you're doing well, you still hear it, and even, you know, the bad years you hear more of it. So I, I think it was a little bit of therapy for her to get out of there, but, but it helps me tremendously. All right, Coach, so thanks for joining us. We're going to bring in Trenton Walker. Best of luck. Rest of the season. All right, Lewis County senior Trenton Walker joins us on HTPT. Trenton, uh, it's been a, a good role for you guys lately. Uh, like I talked to Coach about five wins in a row now. Um, how did that win over Elliott County kind of help boost your confidence? Uh, well, it was, it was just a good all-around team win for us. It kind of motivated us to, you know, we can do, we can beat anybody in this region. It's, it's all hard. How have you kind of emerged, uh, you know, personally as a leader on this team? How have you? Cause it seemed like you were kind of thrust into that role a little bit last year too as a leader of this team. How have you kind of embraced that? Um, I've taken it in, and I like to do it on get get everybody coming in front of the defensive end. You know, all the time I can do it on the offensive end, like Jake can, but I can help out on the defensive end a lot. But you have had your fair fair share of success on offense, 1,000 points now. Uh, you got that earlier in the season. How much does that mean to you? Uh, it, mean, it, it means a lot. It's a good personal goal for, for me. Uh, I ain't really looked up on it yet, but I will. Uh, been a varsity player since eighth grade, so it's been a, a five-year run for you. Um, how can you, uh, you know, kind of reflect upon what's happened here at Lewis County and, and sum up what it means to be a Lewis County line for you? Uh, yeah, uh, we've had our ups and downs. We ain't never got to the point where I want to be yet, as in winning a district title or anything like that. But uh, it means a lot to me. Man. Wow. Does this team, do you think, have what it takes to maybe get that district title and maybe make some noise and reach a time? I hope so. I hope so. Uh, you've had to deal with a little bit of an injury. Uh, you know, uh, coach was telling me you had a bruised heel. Um, you've had to play through that a little bit. What's that been like? Uh, it's, I, I've been, well, I ain't been practicing that much here this recent, but uh, I've been fighting through it. Um, I always like to ask about you know the personalities in the locker room. Uh, who has the most maybe dynamic, the loudest personality on the team? Uh, it's got to be Jacob Keebler. Jacob Keebler? Yeah. Well, he's the tallest guy, the biggest guy on the team too, right? Yeah. So he, he can't hide. No, he can't. What makes what what else makes him stand out besides his six foot eight frame? His goofiness. <laughs> yeah, he's a good person to be around. All right, Trent. Thanks for joining us, and best of luck. Thank you. We're back in the jungle at Lewis County High School. This is Lewis County senior point guard Jake Parker. And Jake, this is your second year in this role. You started out as a wing player, and um, I guess that's point guard is one of those positions that you kind of get better as you go. So what's your, your second year in that position been like as far as making progress? Well, like you said before, I started out as a wing player, and it's it's a difficult transition because you're used to people setting you up. Mm -hmm. And when you move to the point guard role, you have a lot more responsibility in terms of running the offense, setting people up, mm -hmm. and then not forgetting about yourself. And mm -hmm. the first year going into the point guard, it is a big transition because I, I wasn't used to having the ball in my hands all mm -hmm. the time. 
But when you have the ball in your hands a lot, you're, you're expected more of you. Like, coach got on me last night for turning ball over late. And uh, I've had – he's yelled at me a little bit more than, than I had yeah. in the past. He wasn't expecting that much from me mm. when I started out. But now he's expecting a lot, for, a lot more of me. Uh, you guys, of course, a huge win over Elliot a few nights ago and got Russell as well. Um, kind of a little bit of a slow start. What has gone into you guys kind of hitting your stride and getting better at this point of the year? Uh, just having great practices and having more games to gel with one another. And like Coach mentioned earlier, uh, he said beginning of the year, and it's part of my fault too. But we got we got a little bit more individual. Uh, first game of the season, I took 20-some shots. And yeah. I, didn't, I didn't make a lot of them. <laughs> Unfortunately, but uh, we've gotten a better job of running the offense, going inside out, moving the ball, and that sort of thing. And I think that's one of the big reasons why we've been on the road that we are right now. Uh, wearing red here today, and you guys have started for the first time in several years uh, wearing red uniforms again. Talking to Coach Hampton a little while ago, and uh, red is actually part of your old school colors, but people are used to seeing you in blue yeah. and also in black. And what's it been like to, to kind of break out the new uh, jerseys, and people are seeing a different side of you guys, I guess. Uh, personally, it means a lot because it's a new uniform. It's a Nike uniform. We not only got a new red, we got a new white and red. Mm -hmm. We got new travel gear. It shows that uh, Coach is actually investing a lot of, not only time, but he's investing a lot of assets in us. And uh, hopefully that we can return the favor and wins mm -hmm. and that's what we think is success. Mm -hmm. Talk about winning Coach Hampton. And we were talking about this a little bit ago. He got his 200th win earlier this year and, and uh, he doesn't talk a lot about it. You didn't even realize it until we yeah. talked about it a little bit before. Um, What's it like to play for in a program that's had that, that kind of success and you guys have been able to do that and, and he's been around long enough to do that as well? It's, it's been great. Uh, when I first started here, uh, it wasn't the best. We won six, six wins uh, my first year and it's been, it's been a blessing to be a part of uh, the rise of this program. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't here when he had a lot of success like mm -hmm. 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. 2011, 2012 when they had Terrence and Cody mm -hmm. and Juice and all those guys. But, now it's it's really great to see the transition from being not so very good and mm -hmm. actually being a good team right now. Mm -hmm. And we'll wrap up with this a huge game with Greenup coming in here obviously Friday. What do you see the environment and the atmosphere being like on that night? Uh, it's a district game. It's a C game. Uh, I don't think a lot of people like Greenup, but <laughs> it's going to be a great atmosphere. There was a great atmosphere here last night, and that's usually how it happens in district games. It's going to be a good test for us. All right, good deal. Thanks, Jake. Thank you. Time for HDPT's two for the road. Matt, I'm going to go first. Is that right? I guess. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to talk hockey. You're going to have to travel up on the AA highway, go a little north, and go to Ohio to, to get in hockey country. But but uh, I'm just, I could talk the NHL a little bit, can I? Go right ahead. All right. Uh, Bobby Farnham. He's he's uh, he's a guy that uh, he's starting to. He doesn't lead the league in penalty minutes just yet, but he's climbing up the list. He had 15 penalty minutes the other night from the New Jersey Devils. They were playing against the Blues, and just he initiated with a violent hit, an all-out brawl, and you could just tell that the crowd just really fed off that. Was, they went into a frenzy after that, and it just shows you, I guess my point is to illustrate, is that the NHL is, is still kind of that sport where collisions and, and violence are still there and still present and still kind of uh, wanted and desired from the fans and whatnot. And you look at the NFL, and you look at that Steelers and Bengals game, for instance, and some of the violent hits, and, and safety is such an issue, and I think it should be uh, for football right now. But I, I guess my point is just that you look at the differences in the two sports right now, the NHL and the NFL, and uh, they're just going in two different directions. Um, if, you, if you want a collision, high collision, high impact, violent sport for once in a while, you have to watch the NHL instead of the NFL. You watch a hockey game, the referees will actually let them fight it out. They do. Before they intervene. But, you know. but they intervene at the right time. They do. I think the NHL officials do a fantastic job. And plus, they stay up on those skates, too. I mean, I don't see how That's they do that. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Really. My two of the road, uh, uh, change the calendar means we got to vote for Sportsman of the Year here in Kentucky right. and uh, make my case for a horse, a horse being the Sportsman of the Year. Uh, the horse as a sportsman? Sportsman. All right. Well, you know, this, this horse, horse is a boy. So okay. Man. All right. Uh, American Pharaoh, uh, 37 years since the Triple Crown winners. Never, you know, it's, it's it's hard. It's hard not to put a horse that has something done, something that has never happened before. But he's still a horse. Uh, I think that there's a lot of more <laughs> deserving humans. I thought you were going to go the other way. No, no, no. You know, I'm a horse racing guy too. I know you are. So you know. Uh, 
he made my top three, but uh, I think he had to really had to give it to a human. Yeah. Well, I'm with you on that. Yeah. All right. All right, we're going to close it out here and get out of uh, Lewis County High School. We've uh, enjoyed it here. Thanks again to Coach Joe Hampton and guards Trenton Walker and Jake Parker for joining us on HTPT. Again, HTPT is brought to you by Fan and Automotive Family from Matthew Sparks, Zach Clemmy, who vacated the premises, and Aaron Snyder. We'll see you next time.